Hi, this video is going to be about quantitative genetics and today's problem is two homozygous varieties of Nicotiana longiflora were crossed to produce F1 hybrids. The average variance of corolla lens of all three populations was 8.76. The variance of two generations was 40.96. Estimate the heritability of flower lens in the F2 population. So, uh, if you know how to solve this problem, I recommend you to stop video here, try to solve this problem on your own, and when you would be ready, you can run video again, and you can compare your answer with my answer and explanation. So, before I will explain how to solve this problem, I want to give you some information, what is the, um, for example, uh, uh, homozygous varieties, and we have here two homozygous varieties and that means that uh, here we have two parents both of them uh, represent pure lines and what is a pure lines? pure lines is uh, uh, such uh, plants that uh, are homozygous for all loci and uh, that is um, result of uh, self-pollination generation after generation and after 10 generations we would lose uh, all the heterozygosity and all the loci in such a plant would be homozygous it can be homozygous dominant or homozygous recessive so now we can um, use for example Punnett square and I will explain you uh, what we can expect in F1 generation. So imagine that this is parent 1 and uh, on the other side we have parent 2 that is going to be homozygous recessive for the same um, locus and if we cross two parents uh, we can expect here um, all the uniform genotypes so as you see, uh, all F1 generation going to be uniform. Those it's going to be heterozygous. Those it's going to be different from the parent one and parent two. But still, F1 generation doesn't show any variance because 100 percent for this uh, particular locus it's going to be uniform. And imagine that uh, we also can have two parents, two plants that uh, might be, for example, homozygous dominant, both of them. Uh, this is purely random process. And of course, uh, if two parents would be homozygous dominant for the same locus, here we would have also uniform results. Or they can be homozygous recessive for both both parents for the same locus and once again here we would have uh, the same results uniform results and there not going to be any segregation uh, of traits of alleles and uh, of course uh, the same picture would be with each uh, allelic pair if of course uh, this plant would be deployed because in plants sometimes we have uh, triploidy, tetraploidy, and so on. But uh, this is easy example. So, um, as you see, uh, in F1 generation, we also call this hybrid generation. We might expect hybrid vigor. Uh, that's uh, meaning that uh, F1 generation usually would be much bigger stronger than parental inbreed generation because when we inbreed uh, plants we also um, uh, influence these plants by uh, inbreeding load so some deleterious uh, traits can um, influence the plants and uh, when we cross to inbreed plants we may uh, expect better results for F1 generation. That is why hybrids of such a higher value. And um, here is a second um, picture. 
uh, when we cross uh, self-pollinate F1 generation, so we would have for the parent one uh, this genotype, and uh, we take it from here, and for the parent two we have the same genotype. And this is going to be parent one here and parent two here. And when we cross these two parents, we are going to get F2 generation. And as you see here, we would uh, expect a segregation of the alleles into the different genotypes and phenotypes. So here we would have capital A small a, capital A small a here, and small a small a here. And as you see, we have here three different uh, genotypes. And uh, if it is simple Mendelian genetics, we may have here two phenotypes. Or if it is, for example, codominance or incomplete dominance, we may expect three different uh, phenotypes here. So, anyway, uh, the same picture would be for each allelic pair. And uh, plants usually have more than 20,000 uh, genes. And uh, imagine that the same picture would be with each uh, gene, with each allelic pair. So, that means that uh, every plant in F2 generation would be completely unique and uh, each plant in F1 generation would have the same genotype and that means the same phenotype. So all the um, uh, variety, all the uh, variants in F1 generation would be only due to environmental factors. And here in F2 generation, we would expect two factors. One would be genetic uh, uh, variants, and another one would be variants due to environmental factors. So here is the formula. Uh, variants total would equal to variants genetic plus variants environmental. And uh, now we can proceed with our problem. And as you see in the uh, first uh, three uh, populations, and uh, first population is parent one, and here is a parent two, and uh, third population would be F1 generation. So all the three uh, populations would be um, genetically uniform. So all the plants would look like uh, clones of each other. But here in the F2 generation, we would have uh, each plant that going to be uh, genetically unique. So in the F2 generation, we expect uh, the total variants to be uh, genetic variants plus uh, environmental variants. But in the F1 generation, we expect uh, all the variants be only due to uh, variants uh, environmental. Because uh, all the genotypes would be the same in all the plants, um, we should expect uh, also uniform results. And this is one of the reasons that uh, F1 or hybrid uh, generation is of such higher value and uh, because we expect the same um, uh, variants uh, or small variants in the um, in such plants so we expect uniform uh, tallness uniform ripeness of the fruits for example uh, they would uh, produce fruits at the same time so this is very important for mechanical uh, harvesting and post harvesting uh, production so now we can uh, use the second formula in order to find uh, the heritability and heritability would be h squared equal to uh, variance um, genetic divided by variance total and as long as we don't know variance genetic 
uh, we can uh, find it using this formula here and as you see uh, we know the variance total and this is going to be variance total this variance would include uh, environmental influences plus uh, uh, variance in genetic makeup of each uh, plant but in the first uh, three populations due to absence of the genetic variance and all the variance in the inbreed lines, two inbreed lines and one hybrid would be due to um, only environmental uh, factors and this is number. So we can find uh, variance genetic very easily and this is going to be variance total minus variance uh, environmental and this is of course uh, what we would left what we would be left with this is going to be variance genetic so and uh, once again we have to divide by variance total and now we can use just numbers that we have in our problem uh, for the final step so variance total would be uh, 40.96 minus 8.76 divided by 40.96 and the answer here would be heritability would equal to 0 0.79 and this is going to be our answer today and this is formula that we use in order to solve this problem so you just can uh, memorize it as long as uh, this formula too and uh, using these two formulas you would be able to solve many problems that you may also have on your exam and this is all for today thank you for your attention please subscribe for my new videos that i post almost every day thumbs up if you like this video please write your comments questions if you have any and see you in the next video. Goodbye.